I need to just like be zen for a minute. ADHD goes undiagnosed in women all the time because it just presents itself differently. I am starting a medication tomorrow, but yeah, I'm gonna keep you guys posted on that journey. So after talking to some people and realizing that I may have ADHD and that may be causing a lot of my anxiety, because a lot of my anxiety, as you guys know, is like work-related or if I don't feel productive enough or I feel overwhelmed from the things that I have to do. And as much as just mental health in general is not talked about enough. I feel like ADHD is another thing that has like this added stigma around it, especially for women. My poor skin is upset right now. I have a weird dry patch on my eye. That's new and fun. I'm gonna go a little harder on the makeup today. That's the other issue. When I have long hair, I am like feel the need to like glam it up. There's a lot we could unpack there. Is it causing actual harm to others? Or is it just causing me insecurity? My new motto when assessing things of what I'm doing and if somebody reaches out to me and says, I don't like this, it's cause no harm. It's interesting, I don't know if I fully completed each thought I was having in this, which is weird because this is my first day on attention medication and I kind of feel like I really just rambled and bopped all around, but I do feel like I was more easily connecting my thoughts and understanding my thoughts. I just don't know if I fully finished them, which I feel like is kind of the opposite of what I expected. I also am so scared of like a placebo effect that I'm like, trying to completely forget that I've taken anything today. I don't know. Catch y'all later. <laughs> Hi guys. Ah, as you saw, we are two months in the future, so I feel a lot more qualified to share my updated experience. Frank is snoring, so you'll probably hear that in the background. Enjoy. Before I update you on how the last two months have been going, I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I will never stop encouraging you guys to go to therapy, and BetterHelp is a great place to start. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist who you can start communicating with in 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, it's not self help, it's professional therapy done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network, which may not be available in your local area, and BetterHelp is a available to clients worldwide. One of my favorite things about BetterHelp is how flexible it is. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You'll receive timely and thoughtful responses, and you can also schedule weekly phone or video calls, whatever makes you more comfortable. It's really important to find a therapist who matches you and gets you, and sometimes this takes time. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. So at any time, if you would like to change therapists, they make it easy and free. The hardest part about therapy other than just getting started is how expensive it is. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. You can also get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp using code Cami Scott. Just go to betterhelp.com slash Cami Scott. That's better H-E-L-P and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. All right, we're gonna go over some of the positive things I've noticed over the last two months the negative things over the last few months, the advice I have for you guys, and the questions I have if you are somebody who has been diagnosed with ADHD for a while and is on medication because I have some questions that I think you guys can help me with. Hi, baby. So first up, I, uh, I don't really know how to explain this, so bear with me. I have always had these waves and these ebbs and flows of being super stressed out and overwhelmed and it makes me very introverted because I'm just like, there's no way I have time to get everything done. Everything's so hectic, I'm way overbooked, I can't do anything and it really stresses me out and makes me not make plans with friends and not make dates with Taryn and I just feel like I wake up, I do my tasks, I work, I get shit done, I'm exhausted, I go to bed and repeat, which is not a super fun way to live. <laughs> obviously, but I've always had like little spurts of feeling really great and feeling really productive. And in those moments, even if I have just as much, if not more on my plate than the times I'm feeling down, I am really chatty. I would rather talk on the phone than send a text. I am making a ton of plans with friends, which would always bite me in the butt because by the time the plans would come up, I'd be back down. I didn't understand what this was. I didn't know if it was 
depression, anxiety. I just would ride the waves. So here's a little clip from just a couple days after starting my medication. When I'm feeling super distracted or like I have too much going on and I'm really overwhelmed, I also notice how antisocial it makes me. It makes me really not want to make plans with people because I feel overwhelmed by all the work I have to do. I think I might be drained that day because there's no way for me to know ahead of time if I'm gonna have energy to like focus on being around people. I find it really draining being around more than like, not even a big group of people, but like more than my core. And by core, I don't even mean my closest friends. I mean like Taryn and my best friend Seth. Anyone outside of that, even if they're my closest, best, great friends, I feel nervous that I'm not being fun enough in that setting, that I don't have the energy to give what they need in that moment, and that causes me a ton, a ton, a ton of anxiety. I did notice today that I'm like wanting to make plans with people way in advance. I am really feeling that like go-getter eagerness mentality. I don't know if it is related at all, but even for my own timeline and figuring out if this is helping me i just wanted to note that that i am feeling that a lot today so anyways <laughs> can you tell i'm stressed about this ay, ay, ay. these moments of feeling like i can handle more on my plate and i can balance work and my social life are way more frequent well and by frequent pretty much every day that i take my medication chattier happier, just more present. I feel way less overwhelmed. I feel like no matter how much I have to do, I can totally get it done and it's manageable. And I can make time for checking in on my friends and going to see my friends and hanging out with Taryn. That's been really enjoyable for me to have that more often. I also feel way better when interviewing people on the podcast. I feel like I can both focus on what they're saying, think about what I wanna ask them and what I pre-planned and how I can link everything. I can just handle things and it feels so amazing. Like literally I could cry. It feels so good. I think one of the biggest things is when Taryn and I work from home together, I would get so short tempered and so snippy. If she would interrupt me during the day, I would just get so overwhelmed. I couldn't handle having a conversation with her and taking a break and getting work done. And she is like so social when she works. She can sit there and chat and hang out. It's great. I want to be her, but I didn't feel like I could ever do that or be that. I was like, I have to focus, I have to focus. And it made me really sad and like embarrassed and I would try to hide it from her and then it would just make me like short tempered and it sucked. And I feel like I don't do that anymore. So overall, the positives are incredible. I feel like a better version of myself. I, I feel like myself. All of the things that I was feeling before, I was like so frustrated by them. I was like, this isn't me. Like, what is happening? I just feel so much more in control and it feels amazing, so amazing. We do need to talk about some of the negatives. So one big negative is as great as I can focus on things and as creative as I feel, I often focus on the wrong things. Update on my attention medication. Today I'm having misplaced focus and patience. Riggins brought poop into the house and I got so upset and I yelled and then I felt really bad that I yelled because that's literally not doing anything for her and helping. So I took, I, don't know, I really don't even know how much time went by. That's another thing. I'm like having no clue how much time things are taking. I spent just over an hour trying to build their confidence in things that freak them both out. So Frankie has bad allergies and he, I think had a really bad experience at the vet once. I'm not sure I couldn't go in because of COVID. And he's really weird about getting his like eardrops in to clean them. So I spent a ton of time just trying to desensitize him to the bottle, not even like actually doing it, just holding it up, giving him a treat, putting it by his ears, giving him a treat. And then Riggins is kind of scared of everything. She has a lot of anxiety, so working on building her confidence is really important. So after I did Frank, I was brushing him and Riggy sheds a lot, so she needed brush, but she gets freaked out by the brush. So I then spent, I don't know, half an hour on her, just getting her comfy with the brushes and giving her treats to 
reward her and tell her that's a good thing. It was very misplaced <laughs> focus and energy. An important thing to do that I think I forget to do, we need to be doing confidence building like that every single day with them. So I'm glad I did it, but I have a lot of work to do. So I need to go get my work done now and try to put my focus on that. So I've just been trying to go with this I've been trying to just allow myself to lean into the thing that I wanna hyper focus on for a little bit of time and then making myself get back to it. If you guys have any advice on how you like stay on track on the tasks that you actually need to do and not get sidetracked by silly things, please let me know. I have found ways to justify doing things that aren't necessarily a thing I need to do. Like today, I did this hairstyle. It's not working for me. And I was like, well, I'm gonna record it so it's for future content. So it is working, I'm, I'm working. And earlier today, I took like an hour to share a bunch of links. One person asked me where our bedding is from. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll share that. And then I was like, well, while I'm sharing this, I should share the headboard and the side tables. Like, I don't know, I went way out of control and spent way too much time where I basically shared every item in our bedroom and where it's from which is great because a lot of them are on sale right now for the holidays, so I'm happy I share them so you guys can get a discount during that time, but that is not where my priority should have lied. The second negative thing is my appetite. I wanna be careful how I talk about this. As someone with a history in eating disorders, I know that it can be triggering. So I'm gonna put a timestamp in the description box so that you can skip over this section if it may be triggering to you. If you're anything like me, that's only gonna make you wanna stay around more. So I'm gonna be really cautious with how I speak on this. My medication kills my appetite and I'm hoping that this balances out. I don't think I've been consistent enough taking my medication. I don't take it every day. I probably take it like 50% of the time I would say, maybe even a little less. So the way I've tried to combat that is I wake up and I try to have breakfast right away and then take my medication. So I know that I at least have one big meal in me. I'm also really trying to up my water intake. The medication I'm on can make you dehydrated. Hold on, let's, let's take a big sip of that. So I try to drink a lot, a lot of water, which I'm also tending to forget. I've always kind of had these problems because before the medication, I would have to so greatly force myself to hyper-focus that if I went to pee or eat or get water, I'd get out of that. Now the medication, I know that I can go pee and come back and get right back into it, so that's been helpful. And you know when you're just like chewing and chewing feels like your jaw's like locking up and you're like, it's just so much work. And the thought of swallowing that is like, I just, I can't, I don't know how to explain it. Oh, one more negative, it is so expensive and my insurance is so bad. Oh my God, I'm getting insurance in the new year. In America, there's like only this one term where you can switch insurances. It's such a pain in the butt. My insurance is so bad. Medication is disgustingly expensive, but I would rather invest in my mental health and well-being than clothes or dinners or whatever. So that's where we're at. I will continue to update you guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm happy to share any insight I do have. I'm also going to be doing a podcast episode kind of updating on the similar situations. So if you guys have questions and you want me to answer them in that podcast episode, leave them below and don't forget to check out that episode of Uneducated. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope that it was helpful to you. I love you all so much and I will see you next week. Bye.